Welcome everyone, welcome PCS members, uh, welcome uh, our friends to today's uh, PCS IBS seminar. And uh, it is a pleasure to have uh, with us uh, again uh, Dr. Marko Ciosic uh, from Vincia Institute of Nuclear Sciences in Belgrade. Uh, and uh, we had Marco uh, here uh, already last week, and uh, today uh, he will uh, tell us uh, about uh, complexity of Bohmian dynamics inside the chiral, let's see, uh, carbon nanotube. Carbon nanotube. Uh, yes, uh, Marco, uh, please uh, let us welcome Marco. Okay, well, <laughs> hello for all again. This will be my standard presentation, you know, less than eight slides. I don't need to introduce myself anymore. So this is something uh, which we also do, uh, and we try to analyze uh, transmission of uh, ions to uh, material, very kinds of nanostructure material. In this particular case, then it will be nanotubes, uh, but from nonlinear dynamics standpoint. And what we wanted to do to use knowledge of dynamical system theory to apply it in quantum mechanical context, but it's not so easy. So what we were considering, well, let's try to calculate bone trajectories and then see what we can get out of it. So uh, this is short overview of uh, uh, today's talk. Uh, I will tell something about complexity of regular systems. And uh, I should be mentioned that simple interference uh, is not usually considered as complex effect. I will say something about what, what we mean when we say Complex, well, it has many different meanings, but more of that later. We will, we will analyze a classical solution of the problem. We will see how classical ion beam evolves and what we do inside the nanotube. Then we will analyze uh, quantum solution of the same problem, so transmission of uh, Gaussian wave package governed by Schrodinger equation. And then we will try to see what bone trajectories will tell us about dynamics in this system, and we will try to make some conclusions. And I will speak about little about open problems that we are trying to do next, and this is something that might, may be interesting for uh, possible collaboration, uh, because those things uh, I think are interesting, but not necessarily easy to do on your own. OK, so. Let's begin. Well, you are already familiar with channeling, but let's uh, remind you briefly. Well, uh, if your ion beam is very fine, so practically parallel, um, and it is aligned uh, with symmetry axis of the non-structured material, it can be axis, uh, uh, symmetry axis of the crystal, in this case, axis of the nanotube. Well, then, uh, and your energy is sufficiently large, then transverse potential of this uh, solid will be able to capture incoming ion, in this case, positron. Well, I use positron in order to be, uh, to quantum treatment to be necessary, otherwise it will behave classically. Uh, but it will be uh, captured and gently, its trajectory will gently steer by uh, correlated series of small angle scatterings on atoms forming atomic strings in this solid. And most importantly is that you have very well-defined trajectories. They are not random, like in uh, case of, uh, like in general case, when you uh, have arbitrary incidence angle with respect to the solid. Uh, and energy loss is therefore much, much less and all other disturbing effects also. Uh, so we will study transmission of positron beam through chiral nanotubes. So what it means chiral? Well, that means that atomic strings, which are forming circumference of nanotube, will spiral around uh, symmetry axis. And when you calculate this potential, because the large number of atomic strings, you will see that 
this potential is practically axially symmetric. So this allows us to simplify uh, project uh, considerably. And what we need to analyze is motion or particle in this uh, uh, axial symmetric potential. Well, this means that our system is affected one dimension. So we will simplify again and we'll analyze motion in just one cross section. So uh, this is technical stuff, which is not at all important, but we include thermal effects in standard way, like you do in the scattering theory, kind of scattering theory, just average your potential over the distribution of uh, uh, thermal fluctuation of uh, carbon atoms. Okay, that's technical stuff, but what is uh, interesting? Well, if you know a little bit about dynamical system theory, you know that by definition, one dimensional systems are regular. So there is only one integral of motion. Uh, that is energy. This uh, system is uh, conservative. So uh, because of high energy approximation, notice that uh, in that direction, there is no dependence of potential. That means that your uh, longitudinal kinetic uh, energy is conserved. And you simply move in this potential. And in the case of channeling, there are no uh, uh, non-elastic effects. So this is conservative system. And by definition, it is uninteresting, boring. Uh, so what is the sort of this potential? So what is the source of this potential? Source of this potential is a, a potential of positron carbon atom interaction, which is a little bit, little bit strange, but it is given by statistical atmosphere model of atom. Uh, it works well for sky energy scattering. So, but in, so you, if you put all atoms form in exact position, and then because of high energy uh, approximation, you, your particle is sensitive only to the longitudinal average part of potential. So integrate it out. But when you add contribution of all atoms to get atomic strings, and then you add contribution of all atomic strings, you get some potential. And actually, excellent approximation of this potential is this expression. But in, in, in nanotube, in so electron, why you do not consider the they are here they are here it's, uh, this is a reproductive potential of uh, of a uh, neutral atom neutral atom yeah 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 so this is uh, actually uh, because positron we treat it as a uh, probe um yeah, an electric probe so this is electrostatic you get this by averaging uh, electro uh, potential of neutral atom given by Thomas Fermi, uh, oh, sorry, a Molière approximation of Thomas Fermi uh, potential. And there are other potentials since we are speaking about potential in high energy or in this kind of experiments, ZBL potential, if you have heard about it, is also used where well, same logic is applied. Uh, potential is different because it's calculated from, um, uh, I think, uh, simplified quantum mechanical uh, Calculations which are then uh, averaged over uh, spherical angles, so to so have only radial dependence, to have something simple, because it, 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 you cannot describe formation of the solid using this potential. In that regard, it is not true potential, but if you want to uh, analyze, so maybe it's easier this way. So, true potential. Uh, something must be looked something like this, and it's able to capture something and to create harmonic uh, atomic bonds. But if you are interested in high energy scattering, so you want its approximation in this regime here, so this trend looking potential actually works rather well if you're interested in general, not in general. And in this case, you, you do the chemical potential so that uh, uh, the, the nanotube is neutral. Uh, carbon atoms form in nanotubes are neutral. Neutral, and in the case of uh, channeling, and you play with uh, energy, and you find uh, regions where you can neglect electronic response of material, so that it, this uh, potential works, and this model works well. And in case of channeling is special because all those effects are smaller than usually, so uh, this is a motivation why we studied. This could be studied in principle, and, uh, and again. Uh, in, for real experiments, uh, we need to have a little bit more detailed model, of course, if we want to explain uh, what will truly be measured. 
but this is simplified model to understand physics inside and the most complicated stuff when you analyze channeling comes from the fact that you have very well defined trajectories and this system uh, is you know not like simple pendulum that you have only just oscillatory motion but every trajectory do it in this on the, in the same way so uh, each trajectory has its own oscillation uh, frequency oscillatory frequency and this is what make this uh, thing complicated you must take this into consideration but uh, for fluctuations are absent so your mm -hmm. trajectories are not random so you cannot apply statistical physics so this is something that we are uh, somewhere in between so you cannot assume that this collective which represents your ion beam is uniformly distributed all over in the loud region of hard space so you can apply statistical mechanics no so this is why we are studying it and we try to study it in this simplified uh, version we cannot when we understand this then we can uh, and investigate it more detailed models. what is interesting in these cases you will find that rainbow effect occurs and uh, usually and we have confirmations from experiments that if you know what rainbow lines are doing then you will have uh, qualitatively correct information you can explain experiment which is actually done but um, uh, okay this will maybe be a very nice topic for the current seminar Sports, I'm really willing to give anybody who is interested in more details about real experiments and why this extremely simple approach actually makes sense. Please come to my office, you know. Me. So, uh, is there any um, experiments in the nanotube? Unfortunately, not. That, that is because it's very difficult to create sufficiently number of a sufficiently trained nanotubes. But uh, we have a lot of exper experiments in cryptos where I can show you high quality experiments and measurements. And we have uh, recently, we have uh, experimental confirmation for, believe it or not, for the first time of uh, crystal rainbow effect occurring in transmission, uh, in channeling of electrons. It's in the process that there are no electron density fluctuations in that it's just static. Uh, this, the, because it's high energy approximation, so you, you your transmission time is very very short. So in essence, if your system will react, you see it will react afterwards when your ion uh, has already passed and exited the crystal. So what we are studying, not what happens to the nanotube, but what happens with the ion beam. So maybe if you are from content matter physics, you are interested in what uh, atoms and solid is doing. But what we are doing, we are interested in what, uh, what uh, ion beam is. So it will happen for sure, see, but if your uh, transmission, uh, transition time is very short, a response will happen afterwards. And you can always perform experiments with very low current that it actually comes done. So your system has enough, enough time to then relax again to the initial state, to the ground state. So you, your approach is your trick is your Positron and yes. some carbon atom. Yes. Right. So yes. Some, yes. Yeah, and we are careful to choose appropriate energy so that we don't have uh, neutralization. I mean, uh, production of gamma rays by uh, electron, uh, electron positron annihilation. So, well, we do, we do the same uh, what we do for the crystals and for crystals, we have experiments and we have indirect confirmation that our theory uh, works. Uh, also, you do not include the spin. No, no, no. This is we when don't have spin. For this. No. Have. Yes, yes, it is, but we don't uh, uh, in, we don't have spin polarized uh, ion beam, and those spin spin interactions yeah, are not important. They make a change of the screening effect. Uh, yes, 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 but uh, this is, you see, it is too detailed for this kind of, uh, uh, in this parametric range. But for these energies and for uh, for such a small transition time, those effects are small. 
So we don't include it. But for instance, if we if we were considering channeling of neutrons, this is possible, and we are thinking uh, how to do it. Uh, for instance, in Grenoble, where you have very very fine uh, neutron beam, then you will need to include also spin interaction, of course, because otherwise you will have no interaction at all uh, with neutrons and no, no no ability to catch. So it can be done, but in this regard, it's not necessary because our incoming uh, beam is not uh, spin polarized. So we don't see this. Okay, so uh, about complexity. Well, there are many aspects of complexity and, you know, many people are investigating those things. Well, intuitively, one definition of complexity, which I like very much, is that system uh, uh, whose behavior cannot be uh, understood properly if you just analyze its constituent parts. So in essence, like good basketball team, you, know, you have good individuals, but as a team, they work much, much more than just uh, summing of individual competence. Like institute, for example, which is also a good example. Uh, and in that regard, uh, people, don't consider regular systems uh, complex. Well, one of the hallmark of complex system, for instance, is chaotic behavior, and this is one dimensional system, so there is no chaos here uh, in classical uh, solution of problem. Uh, and okay, if you analyze quantum corrections, well, what do you see? Well, classical mechanics can give you interference. So uh, this is something you should probably see, and we'll see that it is really is the case. But what in case of interference, well, resulting distribution just fill some of sources because the equations are linear. So usually this is not considered also to be common. So, uh, but this system is special because in, in this case we have rainbow scattering, and I will try to argue why we can think that rainbow scattering is different and why we can think of it as a complex effect. And I also analyze uh, bond trajectories and their complexity, but from different standpoint, from standpoint of information theory, uh, and try to argue that uh, this system probably generates uh, information. So in that sense, new observation of the system uh, always generates new knowledge, and in that regard, it's much more complex than the system for which you can learn everything about it in infinite time. So how does this sigma depend on temperature? Uh, sigma, sigma is functional temperature. It, uh, it is in this particular case given by the Y1, very simple, which works in case of solids. Uh, you will need to have more advanced model if you consider the graphene that you can have free motion in one dimension. Okay, now let's continue. Now let's investigate uh, uh, how classical solution the problem looks like. Here you can see a family of classical trajectories for incoming absolutely parallel uh, uh, positive beam. Your eye is immediately uh, captures these uh, colorful lines. You see, uh, mathematically speaking, those are envelopes of this function family, and what are the envelopes? Well, they are the places uh, where neighboring trajectories uh, look cross, and uh, it is limiting curve. Uh, made out of those intersections. Uh, you how to follow the nanotube. Sorry? How to, what, how to treat is a nanotube with the energy? Nanotube so, energy? Do you consider the harmonic operation or? No, no, no. I, 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 I saw the equation of motion. Or, I saw the equation of motion in this potential. But you see, potential is a electron with the Carbon carbon carbon. No, 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 just like a static. Uh, this is a uh, static potential of neutral carbon atom. So I add contribution of all atoms together to get potential of the number. Is there any difference in the conventional molecular dynamics of simulation? Is the same? Uh, sorry, sorry, what? what is the next? For example, we are talking about the Dynamics of the atom, we consider the, uh, some point of Leonard Jones potential or uh, harmonic potential. Yes, 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 of course, uh, but uh, this will not make a difference uh, in regarding uh, what I'm studying. 
Just you can change potential, but those are the standard potentials which are uh, tested experimentally many times in this particular uh, settings of uh, high energy scattering. So again, this is the not proper potential potential like maybe you were using. This is the approximation of true potential which describes high energy scattering. Oh wow! Why do you mean over high energy? Yeah, but I just scale over energy. Uh, mega electron volts. Yeah. Mega electron volts. So in this particular case, our particle has one mega electron volt. Uh, uh, How much will it still You mean? This energy is very huge, right? Yes. This, so how much will it destroy them? Uh, no, 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 it's, it's not. Uh, you uh, you don't expect to be the plastic scattering, right? Yes, this is like a positive form of high energy, yes. and another two, which is yes. not doing anything but hiding. Right? Yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. So the, the nanotube is just like a, like a cylinder, yeah. which could be an electrostatic yeah. potential, and the positron is flying through. Yes. But the nanotube is not excited. No. It's no. actually like so, zero temperature. No. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so like classic law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. exactly. So uh, because of we don't consider infinitely long nanotubes, you see, it is uh, 1,400 1, nanometers long. So when you transmit, through such a nanotube, and you see when you have a mega electron volt energy, so transition transmission time is very very short. So you will excite response, the electric response of the nanotube electrons will be perturbed, etc. In reality, but since flight time is very uh, small, you can neglect uh, this electric response uh, on the positive. You see, it is completely different matter. You want to study what happens. With the nanotube afterwards, but it's a channeling experiment. So transmission through, and in principle with the low current. So one positron, then you wait. You see, it is femtoseconds to transmit, and then you wait picoseconds. You know, we are very impatient. You know, then uh, system relaxes and we repeat. So in this setting, the colleague pointed out, which is like pure electrostatic potential, just like uh, uh, wave, uh, wave gap. Oh, sorry. Carbon of or like optical fiber in which guides. And this is one of the reasons why we study this effect where there are ideas to use nanotubes for guiding of uh, ion beams. So your eyes immediately uh, will notice these lines, and uh, uh, they appear regularly. You see, it's very interesting. You can show uh, that this task here will repeat with exact frequency, and this frequency corresponds to the frequency of trajectories uh, uh, close to the center of nanotube. Why? Because uh, envelope is limiting curve of neighboring intersections, and where you can, which neighbor can cross this uh, constant trajectory, well, only his closest neighbor, and when you find this frequency oscillation, you can then uh, show that this repeats with uh, perfect periodicity. But what is interesting is that uh, uh, those uh, caustic lines will become elongated and they number because of this increases in each particular cross section. So, for instance, here you have only two branches, but here you immediately have one, two, three, four, five, uh, sorry, one. Two, three, four, five, six, and so on. So, uh, number of uh, caustic line increases steadily and their density increases. So, why are they interesting? Well, you can see immediately that they mark uh, a border where no, uh, number of trajectory hitting each particular point changes by two. So, this is their significance. And you immediately see that it goes to this line, density of trajectory is infinite. And when you calculate, uh, but we will measure, for instance, uh, uh, if you put detector here, what you will see when you will see, uh, sorry, you will see uh, small yield and high because you cross the first caustic, so then second and something like this. Of course, same logic works in the case uh, in angular space, which is observable. This is. This has theoretical significance, uh, 
but you can have the same effect in microscopic systems like lenses, etc., that you can really measure the uh, uh, caustics in uh, uh, cordon space. So, but okay, you immediately see that this system is regular because behavior of these rainbow lines is uh, regular, but uh, appearance of rainbow lines is interesting. And I think we can uh, think of them as complex. Why? Well, if you take any particular trajectory, let's say this one, it's very difficult to say if you know only this particular trajectory and you calculate it. Uh, regardless of how accurate you want to imagine that you have infinite precision, which part of it or which point on it lies on caustic line and how many caustic line would be. So you expect only one trajectory at the time and you are totally possible. You are not able to tell that this system and this evolution of caustic line has regularity or any regularity at all. So in that regard, caustics is property of collective, and it is not reducible uh, to any property of individual trajectory. So what you have, you have one trajectory, you know its amplitude, its frequency, and think any parameter you want, well, it will not help you to uh, uh, deduce uh, this behavior of caustic lines. So in that regard, uh, I think that uh, rainbow scattering in classical mechanics can be thought as emerging complex effect. But there is no, nothing chaotic about this image. It's totally regular. Uh, but I think that we can argue that uh, uh, rainbow scattering is special uh, because it is unreducible to the uh, so properties of caustic lines are not reducible to any property of each other. So let's now investigate uh, what happens in the case of quantum mechanics. Uh, well, in, uh, if you analyze evolution of Gaussian wave packet shown here, and for simplicity, put one Gaussian at the centrum, so this x starting position is actually zero, and you solve the equation corresponding now equation of uh, dynamic, governing dynamic of this system, so showing the equation, you will get something uh, shown here. Uh, black line shows uh, classical acoustics you saw previously. And what is interesting, and I'm sorry that Gabriel is not here uh, to see this, you see, this is thing which very well resemble classical solution. And this first part is actually canonical diffraction pattern, which is usually associated with rainbow lines. So this is something called cusp, uh, cusp canonical diffraction, if you remember, your optics, uh, singular optics. Uh, but look here. Well, it's very difficult to recognize this pattern anywhere else. You see, it seems that uh, here, if you interpret classical quantum correspondence naively as uh, quantum corrections to the classical solution, well, it turns out it seems that uh, correspondence break down so very fast. This is very interesting. And I'm very curious to know if it is possible with this advanced version of implementation of semi-classical mechanics to recover this, uh, you remember from the last lecture, a periodic behavior of this quantum carpet afterwards. In the equation is a carbon nanotube effect is only included in the potential? Uh, I have potential and then I saw a Schrodinger equation of motion with but this the, initial state. The psi, psi is a uh, the wave function of positive. Yeah, energy. initial wave function of the auto positive. Yeah. But uh, you do not, but, but the round to be itself has your wave function. But uh, your average the uh, potential of the nanotube. No, I treat it as a static external potential. Okay, only this potential. Sorry? But the, Please repeat. The, you do not treat the, the wave function of the nanotube. No, no. No, only no, potential. No, no, yeah. Like uh, I do the same, but the, like in cosmos. Like and said, make a lot of uh, some pl plasmon or phonon or this. Of, of course, case. this is important what happened to the nanotube, but I'm interested in what happens to the positron which I am able to detect. So this is a different setting. Yes, you're totally right. It will generate proper 
the electric response or response of the nerve tube to this perturbation caused by positron. But again, we, we are in uh, channeling mode, so we are interesting in, we are collecting uh, positrons which channeled through the nano tube. And in this high energy regime, uh, flight time is very low, so you can neglect. The response will happen later, not immediately. Yeah, so you, you assume is your potential of a nano tube is the exactly. same in. Exactly. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yes, yes, exactly. So uh, what we see here as addition, a large number of these interference peaks, uh, MC minima. So we have places we uh, show here. This is something which called dislocation chain. So what is dislocation? Well, it's a place where your uh, wave function goes exactly to zero. Uh, and this is place where space is actually undefined. So this is something uh, new. And uh, uh, you think, okay, this is maybe not too difficult to comprehend. Uh, we have some wavy interference behavior. So is it complex and why should it be complex? Well, if you have young experiment, when you have uh, resulting uh, diffraction field, you measure, well, it's just pure sum uh, of uh, two sources. Uh, and you need to, take into consideration nothing more. But in this particular case, when you have rainbow scale, so in, uh, in semi-classical uh, logic, so what happens in this system? So you have real trajectories in this regime, but you have complex trajectories in this region. Uh, in this region. So this, is, this make rainbow uh, effect uh, different from normal interference. Uh, since you have complex rays in this region, this means that uh, this part of the uh, semi-classical approximation of this uh, uh, wave function decays super exponentially, so faster than exponential in this region here. And immediately you understand that it must cause accumulation of wave close to this virtual boundary. You see, uh, as if, this line represents some kind of physical boundary, which is, which is very difficult uh, for wave to cross. Uh, and interaction of this uh, creates this, this uh, pattern here. So this is something which is not so uh, not easy to understand if you analyze that uh, one wave. So you need to take into consideration many rays. Uh, you need to include nonlinear interaction between them if they are real. See, same classical mechanics, you assume that they are rays and there are some wave trains running along these rays. But when you need to cross the acoustics, those rays, when they hit each other, uh, they need to become complex, but only in this particular uh, region. So they, it doesn't happen when they cross here. So it seems if you want to think of this as something real, then you need to include some nonlinear interaction between them. And nonlinearity is hallmark of anything complex. And you have linear equation and forget about complex. Uh, so this is another another way how we can think of this. Sorry. Yeah, oh, what do you mean by nonlinear interaction? Uh, is no, uh, is yes, no, but uh, uh, in semi-classical interpretation. So this equation is linear. No, you know, I speak about interpretation, how you can understand and why I want to motivate, why we made uh, additional steps, sorry? Interactions between what? No, no, no. Uh, you have wave back. And in semi-classical interpretation, uh, you treat it as a collective of uh, rays going along some trajectories which are classical. And you put wave train on each uh, on each uh, trajectory. So like small sign going here. And when two meet, two trajectories meet here, well, what you have, you have uh, uh, pure interference. But what happens here, you see, 
uh, there are no trajectories which will enter this region here. No. But how then to reconstruct quantum mechanical wave function? How do you do it? Well, you do it by introduction of complex rays. You see? So uh, you need to extend those rays into this complex dimension, but you need to do it only in uh, uh, certain areas, not in others. So uh, it is how we can understand it and learn to motivate why we took additional step to analyze bomb uh, trajectories, to do it not in this, uh, 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 how to say, a non-rigorous manner. So if you want to, if you think about rays as something real, then to explain this process when they must change their type from real to, co to complex, the, as if there is some nonlinear uh, interaction between them. So this is this simple logic, it is not rigorous, uh, shows us that maybe there is, uh, we can speak about complexity in case of uh, rainbow scattering, you see. Why? Because in normal and in books, in any literature, you will usually find that people are not considering this system, especially one dimensional system, as complex. You see? Oh, and now to, to push it further and to analyze it further, well, we thought of it, it's not so easy to analyze it in this way. Uh, let's think of something else. So let's try to think what bone trajectories are doing. Why? Well, we, instead of working with this uh, complicated picture, which is then, and we, if we interpret it uh, semi classically, then still we have a problem. What happens with true solution and all the other uh, problems? So we thought to try to analyze bond trajectories uh, to see what they are doing, because as far as known, bond trajectories and bone interpretation will give you the same result as any other interpretation. So uh, actually, this is end of introduction. Now we can go to, to understand uh, what happens when we analyze a uh, problem for, for, from uh, this perspective. Uh, and what is important for the subsection, subsequent uh, analysis? Well, you see, uh, you see a lot of these blue points, like one here, where amplitude is extremely small. This is called phase dislocation. In this particular case, you have this so-called dislocation chains. But you have many others. I just showed this green one here. You have many others, like one here. And in this region, they are not even arranged in chains. A lot of them, the situation becomes very complicated. This actually is initial part of this aperiodic pattern uh, uh, quantum carpet you saw in my uh, first uh, presentation. So uh, point. Uh, which I'm going to make here, and you need to, to remember, is that as you go in the length further down the nanotube, you will find uh, many dislocations, and their number will increase, and the distribution will be very complicated. So at the beginning, no dislocations, then some, and afterwards, many. This will be important uh, uh, afterwards. So, what happens if you put your sigma and become smaller and smaller? Which sigma? Uh, this one. Yeah. Uh, it will, I will generate then periodic uh, periodic uh, carpet, which I showed uh, previously. Uh, I need to. I can do the same analysis in this case. And so this result uh, come from numerical right? numerical uh, simulation of uh, Schrodinger equation using. Uh, Tribution global propagator. Also, network. Um, very good, network, very satisfying. Shows many times that give excellent. Oh, I have one more question. If you treat Pastron as a non relativistic pipe, because it has uh, energy. Yes, uh, what? Okay, okay. Uh, um, this is equation of more excellent question. No, I didn't explain it properly. So, what this equation gives you, it gives you uh, motion in the Zurich plane. You see, in the longitudinal plane, uh, you move uh, uh, with constant uh, momentum, but this momentum is actually relativistic. So, when you do mathematics, sorry, when you do mathematics, it turns out that you have relativistic motion in longitudinal direction, but 
classical motion in logic in transverse direction, but with relativistic mass. So relativistic effects are included uh, through different uh, to true relativistic mass. So you are totally right. I, I, I apologize to this noble audience. Uh, I didn't explain it properly. So yes, yeah, excellent, excellent point. But you, you do the math and you will see that this is the only uh, correction you need to make in laboratory coordinates if you examine from laboratory coordinates. So how do we uh, arrive and what we do we want to analyze something in Bohmian framework? Well, we start uh, with Schrodinger equation, uh, sorry, with the quantum wave function, and then we uh, partition it in the uh, amplitude and the phase. We have two unknown functions. We plug it in the Schrodinger equation. It's a standard stuff. Uh, we then it splits into continuous continuity equation and quantum Hamilton Jacobian equation. You probably saw this many times. What this system makes quantum? Well, it is addition of this thing here, which is called quantum potential or boom potential, which is given by this expression here. Uh, so Bohm assumes that instead of rays, there are real particles which move in additional potential uh, given with this uh, formula here, where um, there is so-called quantum uh, uh, the guiding wave, which takes into consideration uh, effect of the density and guide each individual uh, proton, uh, positive, sorry. And velocity of this virtual volume particle is given just by gradient of the phase standard in classical mechanics. So we, if you do this trick, uh, you transfer solution of Schrodinger equation to uh, equation of motion, uh, classical equation of motion uh, given here with quantum correction of potential. So how this potential uh, looks like? Yeah, we have, it's very difficult to solve these equations uh, as I wrote it immediately, but you can exploit the fact that you already have quantum solution, so you can take out its phase, then you, uh, uh, you use amplitude to calculate bomb uh, uh, potential, to analyze it, to inspect it, and you can then uh, solve this uh, equation of motion with known velocity field, you know, from the phase of wave function. But, uh, let's investigate what happens uh, with uh, quantum potential. You see, uh, it's very crazy. There are places where it's, he is huge. Uh, and it is interesting then when you do mathematics, it's very simple to, to show because of this expression here, where close to the minima, uh, where amplitude goes to zero, this shoots to minus infinity because of this. See, this is positive. So close to minimum, this must be like quadratic function. You see, second derivative quadratic function constant. Constant must be positive because it's minimum. But this is zero, and then it shoots to minus infinity. So this is interesting. And uh, if you are not interested in dislocations and those kind of uh, objects, you'll probably never think about this. So uh, you see, Actually, a uh, lot of places where uh, uh, our quantum potential is extremely blue, and it's very difficult to plot minus infinity. So I just had to cut off the potential on very large uh, area. So you see a lot of places where the bomb uh, the potential is extremely large. So what happens to the bomb trajectories when you go near these regions and uh, uh, maybe in this region, this potential can vastly overpower the classical potential. Let's see what happens. I so, think that in, the, in this approximation, in this picture... Uh, this is exact, sorry, yeah, correct. Yeah, this so, is exact, yeah. not the picture. So, but in this picture, the, the, the important thing is that they're very different, the potential rather than potential, right? I, I mean, what really exists? This yeah. is a good question. Yeah. This is a good question, what truly really exists. Well, uh, I am not, I am most Neumannian, I am not Bohmian. This is uh, how to say, looks classically, but when you solve this, this is known velocity field. 
to see, you know it from here. And actually, when you calculate bomb trajectories, they're not true trajectories. See, they're more like streamlines. So you, you in mechanics, if you remember your mechanics, uh, fluid mechanics, so you have velocity field and you want to know what uh, fluid element is doing, you know, then you solve this equation with no velocity given in advance. So you get streamlines and streamlines like all trajectories cannot cross. You see, and this is the reason why nobody and whoever tried to analyze bond trajectories using non linear dynamics approach, well, he concluded, well, they cannot cross each other, no chaotics, no nothing, we saw so that is interesting in classical mechanics. So let's bother with them anymore. So let's forget them. And they concluded from uh, using that the system is by definition regular, so it cannot be interesting from non linear dynamical standpoint, it cannot be complex, but nobody checked it. Uh, very good. And quality of uh, their calculation was rather poor because all of them, which I was able to find in literature, tried to solve this equation. You see, but to solve this equation, this set is very difficult task. So let's see what our bone trajectories are doing. Well, they are very complicated and very difficult to show, and it will not be important uh, for what I want to say. So I have shown you. Uh, Zoomed uh, a larger portion of classical trajectories. You see, close to the first caustic line, where we don't have any other trajectories. This uh, this region corresponds to this complex trajectory which I mentioned earlier. Uh, and you see a corresponding family of bond trajectories. So uh, you see there is they cannot cross each other because actually they are not. Two trajectories, they are actual, actually, there are three lines. Uh, so it's not so easy to interpret, to assign real reality to them. It is very difficult, but philosophical topic. You know, I am not willing to go there. Uh, and actually, I, I found this approach useful, but I don't believe in bone interpretation at all. So, what is interesting here is the classical caustic lines. You see that it's like border. Their uh, bond trajectories are accumulating in this region here, but also there are some regions you see where they are running away from. Uh, and when you plot this line connecting uh, this location chain, well, it fits perfectly. So uh, then we analyzed what happened, how to describe to quantify this behavior. Well, first thing you can think of is to analyze. Uh, Lepunov exponent, what, what Lepunov exponent will give you? It will give you what uh, neighbors of this particular point on this trajectory uh, do. So if it is positive, this means that neighboring, all the neighboring trajectories are running away. And if it is negative, that means that they're uh, coming close to you in this particular place. And this thing is called uh, finite time Lepunov exponent, local Lepunov exponent. So why finite time? Because this time is finite, you integrate up to this point, and this tells you what neighboring trajectories are doing, for instance, here or anywhere else. And it is local because it is assigned to uh, one particular trajectory. So when we calculate this for the whole family here, we will get picture shown here. See? So you immediately can see these islands of red. Uh, points where uh, local Lyapunov exponent is positive. And what we noticed that we can find red areas even in regions where we didn't expect them, which are not uh, implications. So in these regions here, potential is so large that he can significantly affect a family of bond trajectories. You see it here, but uh, this is not necessarily a dislocation. It is played. It is specific minimum of a uh, wave function, but it is not, uh, this meaning minimal value is not zero, but significantly small to have very large bond uh, or potential. Okay, this is interesting. Well, you remember, or you can remember that when you have positive Lyapunov, well, this smells interesting and probably it is. So uh, we wanted to analyze what happens with this system when we, uh, Analyze it for longer time and to see can we get some interesting result. 
and we try to find what would be global Yapuno exponent of this system. So uh, what is global Yapuno system? So well, you plot all individual uh, local finite time Yapuno exponents, you will get some curve like this. See? And what would be global Yapuno exponent? Well, it would be uh, encompassing curve which encompass maximum. This is so-called in mathematics limit, in, limit superior or supreme. Uh, depends on which books you write. Uh, and another uh, quantity similar, which can be defined, uh, encompassing curve go determined by the minimum of the family. So it is curve going like this. And when you go to the uh, dynamical system theory, they will tell you in regular for regular systems, uh, those two values are equal. This means regular. This is one of the definitions of regular systems. Uh, so what happens in our case? Well, and in case of classical solution, it is that way. <laughs> uh, but in case of uh, uh, quantum solution, because there are these locations, there are places where your uh, potential your turbine trajectory will enter into the region of some dislocation and it will uh, split them into subfamily which goes around them uh, from above or below. And uh, you can see this is zoomed version of this region here. You see, trajectories are mostly below, so uh, Lepunos local Lepunos are mostly uh, negative, but then when they enter into the region close to dislocation, they shoot above zero. You see? Many examples when they shoot above zero. So we can argue that because uh, this carpet is unperiodic and it will have a, a lot of dislocation, that you can find one trajectory, you will find some dislocation to interact with, and it will force it to go into positive region. So limits in limiting uh, uh, supremum is slightly above uh, zero, but it is not zero. Uh, and negative, well, we see the negative, there is no such uh, force which will prevent him to go. So probably time equal or length of magnitude equal infinity uh, will go to zero. But this is interesting case where uh, those two values are not uh, the same. So what is this? Uh, again, uh, it is not regular, but uh, it cannot be complex, so usually this this uh, thing happen in case of or, uh, chaos. Sorry, it's not chaotic. These things happen in case of chaotic systems, but there is no chaos here. Why? Well, essential gradient to form a chaos, you need to have manifold. It stretch in fold on itself, but you do it uh, in such way that you have positive uh, Lyapunov expression. Well, we we don't have touching the folding of manifold made out of bond trajectories, they must remain parallel, and this is their definition. So it's not chaotic, and we know that quantum systems are not chaotic. But um, we can, I think we can think of this system as uh, complex. Well, in which sense? Well, let's think about complexity from the standpoint of uh, information theory. So in, uh, uh, in let's think about simple pendulum. So you observe what pendulum are doing and imagine that you have a, a, a way to sample position of a pendulum in regular intervals. And you observe this sequence. And you observe it for some time and at some time you see that it repeats. So it is, you don't need to observe it anymore. So in a certain sense, uh, you need to observe your system for finite time. So it generates information for some time, but then the saturates, and then uh, no new knowledge by new observation. But in this particular case, I think this is special because uh, they, uh, so our quantum carpet is aperiodic, and there will be a lot of places uh, where uh, you will enter the bomb trajectories will interact with this location, then subdivide into class which go around this particular place above or below, but then these subfamilies will interact with another dislocation and so on and so on. So you can specify a subclass of bone trajectories by, for instance, sequence uh, of uh, symbols, 
denoting shows you uh, how you go around this location. So, for instance, here. This will, will, will uh, get symbol, uh, symbol, for instance, up, and then low, and then you can generate this kind of symbol, up, down, down, up, up, down, etc. And if you inspect this sequence, well, uh, you should find that it is very difficult to spot any regularities, and we argue that because of a periodicity of carpet, uh, this will be truly be the case, and this means uh, that you cannot specify pattern which then repeats. You see, but this means from uh, from uh, information theory standpoint that this system uh, generates information, and in that regard, it is uh, complex. Well, same happens in the case of chaotic trajectories. You see, you have uh, always in chaos theory you are you are following uh, family of chaotic trajectories, but then at some certain time. They will diverge sufficiently out of your uh, resolution, measurement resolution. So now you see instead of one family, you see two. But then you go back in time, and then you can specify initial condition better than resolution you have. And you can uh, repeat this procedure just to observe your system for a longer time, and then you can specify initial condition much more precisely. So in that regard, uh, this system generates information. Well, similar behavior we have here. Uh, but uh, we would like, and if there is somebody who is interested in this kind of problems, how to prove this uh, really rigorously? Well, we play here with the numerical solutions, and we have a problem. Well, this is not time equal or length equal infinity limit. Uh, but I think this approach is uh, viable, and I think we can, because of physical argumentation to think uh, this system, which has uh, rainbow scattering as a complex, quantum complex effect. So that's all. I spent almost all my time for the talk. Uh, uh, thank you very much for attention. Is there any question? Uh, thank you for the talk. A very simple question. You was saying about the uh, generation of information. Yes. Um, but uh, how, how can we use the quantum computation like in encoding information? Or uh, yes, it is excellent question. Well, probably this is not a practical way to do it. But in principle, you can do use it in this particular case when this is aperiodic. To generate random sequences, something like that. Uh, uh, I choose deliberately uh, this aperiodic carpet. You see that I don't have problems, that I have a uh, finite number of dislocations which then repeat, and then I have large area which will be left out of dislocations so that I have uh, families which are uh, simple, you see? But I need to think more about your, your question. In, in reality, it's very difficult when you want to find, when you want to find truly random sequence, you will find there is, uh, you know, you have only finite portion which can be treated as truly random, like several random generators on computer, they are not random. But they are, I don't know if you're aware of that, there is unbreakable code. Unbreakable code uh, works if you have truly random sequence of them. Then it is mathematically proven that it's absolutely unbreakable. But how to get really, truly random sequence? Well, one, one example would be maybe like this, the process like this. So you observe it, and then if this is a periodic, you see, in complex, then this sequence will not have any regularity. So it can be used uh, in that way for, uh, I don't know would you use it for coding and for transmission information, but you can use it for uh, for cycling. Yes. I have a question. Don't you make a nanotube? There are a lot of ways, right? 
sorry, to make a nano tube. To make nano tube, yes. We tell a lot of, I heard that if my memory serves me, is we can not make a nano tube in the jigjag chain or armchair, right? Is yes, yeah, this is this is here on the tube. So they can make the because you 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 try to the uh, similar takeaway and you have different type of nano tube. I see, I see, I see. I uh, see. Uh, I understand your question. No, no, no. Uh, it will not be this, this simple. So potential in case of zigzag or armchair nano tube will not be axially symmetric. So with the inherent two dimension, much more complex. And potential has minima between atomic strengths. So your positrons can go outside. So it complicates analysis. So this is reason why we, uh, and we try to find something which on the first glance, it is not chaotic and to see when you look from this perspective, do we see something additional? So we will have much more complicated system which will exhibit chaotic motion because it's two dimensional and then it will be difficult then to analyze this. This will be probably the next step in investigation we will try to do. But then classical uh, solution is not uh, simple and easy. Yes, Just for clarification, uh, uh, if I understood correctly, the point is that uh, the dynamics of Python B in the carbon nanotube wave guy can be effectively chaotic? Not chaotic, not chaotic. Yeah, it's no, 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 complex. Complex, okay, yes. Complex, so not chaotic, chaotic. please. No, I'm yeah, not yeah, making it chaotic, no. but- No chaos yeah. in one dimensional system, which are yeah, time yeah, independent. Yeah. But yeah, so tell why, but did you show your global reaction of this component is positive? Because I argue that in case of this aperiodic quantum carpet, you will find many places where quantum potential is significantly large that he can affect uh, bond trajectories. And since this pattern doesn't repeat, and uh, it's, uh, it's uh, in, la in linguistic sense, uh, not complexity, uh, let me think. Yeah. Richness in hands, you see, uh, you will find this location or this approximate dislocation everywhere. So, no matter how far you go here, your bone trajectory will still find this location to interact with or this approximate dislocation. So, please take a look here. So, you have uh, each each line is actually representative of whole family of trajectories. Or well, you cannot analyze it. only one. So think think of this as subfamily. So you go and you encounter this. So this subfamily must split. You see, if you if you if this is your experimental resolution, you see when you go interact with this uh, dislocation, half of them go above, half of them go below. You see, and in this region, this means the bottom is positive. So, if this repeats indefinitely, but in a periodic fashion, then I argue that uh, limits supremum will be slightly above zero, probably very small, but not zero. While limit infinum will be zero. This is what I'm arguing. So the, the, uh, this is the reason why I didn't uh, analyze this uh, very narrow wave packet because we know that uh, pattern is then regular and periodic. See? And I want something which guarantees that in limit, I will always find the dislocation or sufficiently no minima, so-called closed dislocation if you like, uh, which can affect my uh, uh, trajectory sufficiently to have uh, Lepuno to become locally positive. So when you go here and you extend this further, so maybe this trajectory will not, but some, some, some different trajectory for arbitrary length will shoot up. So if you 
calculate the curve we just go around maxima, so called limit supremum, it will never be able to go to zero. This is what I'm arguing. And uh, this is something which I would like to be able to prove rigorous. It's not so easy. This is not, uh, uh, I'm not totally satisfied with this. Uh, I run simulation for longer nanotube lengths, but again, I have problem that it is only how to say. There is difference that you have indicated something and then problem that you are actually proved. Okay, do we have any other questions? Seems not, so let us thank Marco again. And for the uh, third part of the seminar, please visit Marco. Oh, yes. <laughs> <In his office. laughs>